I'll just be a good one. Just welcome it. Is it doing the countdown or are we live? You didn't do the countdown? Hello. <laughs> you didn't do the countdown? I don't know. Oh, man, Brendan. Hello. All right. There we go. Sorry about that. Hey, Tony. Hey, Pamela. Madison. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Thought Right Live. I'm usually not the first person to the stream. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? I'm going to wait, let a few people hop in here. Oh, Tony, one day. <laughs> what? Oh, really, Tony? That's some strong feelings there. I don't I don't want to attack anybody. Um I'm good, Michael. You know, me and Brendan try really hard to not attack any other content creators or really anybody. Um you know, we we pretty much like all content creators as long as they're not out there like hurting. <laughs> yeah, Amanda, we are early. <laughs> that's so funny i'm i'm glad you're here i'm glad all of you are here but yeah we we don't want to like ever talk smack on anybody um you know the video with which we'll get into more in a minute when brendan gets here but the video that he released just today i i do feel like he was on to something with the cowboys i i do feel like that I mean, the last video, while it was kind of crazy how it had dropped, like, right after me and Brennan were talking about that, um, and it kind of blew our minds that he was almost on the save, same wavelength, it is a huge stretch. But, Tony, why do you feel like he defames innocent people because speculation isn't necessarily oh. defaming anybody defamation is very specific like you have to be intentionally lying have you done all the intro things i don't know what all intro things you're talking about i said that welcome weird. to thought right live and i was saying hi to everybody in the chat yeah no that's good so <clears throat> Oh no, I got hiccups. That's bad for an intro. Uh but I need to grab a drink. Okay. So I'll no. be right right back. No, no, no. I am uh I'm not better. Um, but I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I have a sinus no infection. No I'm not quitting nose spray until we hit three thousand people, okay? Three thousand subs. Once we hit three thousand. I'm quitting. So what sh should that be in the next couple days? Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully. But welcome to the True Crime Talk Show by Thought Riot Podcast. Um, this is where we go through all things, everything, anything true crime related in the true crime community, whether it's the most popular cases or other content creators in this situation who have uh, touched on some of the more popular cases. You know, we'd love to get to a point where we're doing interviews with other content creators, where we are interviewing criminals, um, where we're interviewing police and anyone that has anything to do with the true crime in general. So welcome everybody. Today we will be touching on Drip Drop's newest video. Let me see. Can I, let me see if I can get his thumb real quick. Hang on. But hello, hello everybody. 
Yeah, you. Uh, I appreciate it. So Madison says I sound better. It's not better. Um, I did a neti pot, and uh, I put nose spray in it. <laughs> It was so bad the whole day, the whole day. I was literally dying the entire day and it was getting close to the time that we were going to come on here. And I was like, I cannot do this. I can't do it. So more than likely what I'm going to do is we should be, we should hit 3k subs either. Like if we stay on the same trend we've been on, it'll either be tonight or tomorrow. Um, so I will probably do the two live streams um on wednesday and thursday and then quit friday so hopefully i did i put no spray in a neti pot <laughs> that sounds like such addict behavior um but uh, i should be able to have like a whole day friday saturday and then by sunday be good to go i'm hoping that gives me almost 72 hours but uh, okay, let me see here. Um, Prime Circus Cult. He's supposed to be kicking All the right. no spray habit. So this is, yeah, once we hit 3K, <laughs> once we hit 3K, I got a few more days. And hey, Shams and Tim and Ian and Suzanne. Or, or hopefully Kathy. one day. Madison, but my nose is just like dripping still, so I got a stack of tissues right here in front of me. But what we're talking about today is Drip Drop's newest video. So, for any of you audio listeners, um, and you know what's cool, so you know how we are talking about this is going to be uploaded on um, on the audio platforms and everything. I had a couple people reach out to me who who said, hey, I don't even watch you guys for the visuals on live stream. I just listen to the audio. So I, I don't think you're giving enough credit to people that do want to listen to the live stream in audio format. Hmm. Uh, so I was like, yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. I'm, I personally watch visual most of the time, but, uh, but yeah, that's great. That's phenomenal. So we're going to be talking about this video right here by Crime Circus Cult. So if you're listening in, um, Crime Circus is their main channel and Crime Circus Cult is the secondary channel. And my best description of them is uh, they literally cover everything. Drip Drop covers everything. Um, and uh, he goes pretty deep into the tin hat topics, but he usually is able to bring it back uh, into a more mainstream topic at the same time, you know, a more realistic, um, like what you would see in court. I think any of it is realistic. So don't take it as saying that none of it's possible because I do think any of it's possible. It's just uh, a lot of times that isn't the type of information that we see being brought into a case or court or, uh, in on ABC News, Fox News, you know what I mean? So, yeah. The tissue hanging out of your nose last night was so ridiculous. <laughs> you have no shame, like, at all. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Um, so I did want to mention real quick before we get into that, um, the girl, what was her name again? The one that was missing from the camp? The one that was missing from the camp? Yep. Are you talking she about the, found, uh, the New York State Park? She was found safe. Um, yeah, you're talking about the Amber somebody, Alert. Somebody got arrested. Like, so she got snatched and whoever it was, was taken into custody. Um, but she was in good health is what it said. Yes. Thank God. Yes. Yes. It literally just happened. Like, they just released that information a couple hours ago. So I... I hope she truly is doing good. There's something that happens in crime, which, again, one of the things that we commit to here. Charlotte I, Sienna. I wonder if I can upload something in our stream where I can put our axiom on here in the beginning of the show uh, every time. But for those of you that watch the Long Forum podcast, you'll know for those of you that might be a new 
subscriber is we'll talk about anything and everything. It doesn't matter what it is. And if we have the information, we're going to share it with you. And that's our commitment to you guys as viewers, you know, um, even if it doesn't seem realistic, there's a lot of content creators out there that will get information and make the decision for the viewer. If you guys should know it, hear it, watch it. And I don't, I just personally don't want to do that myself. I would rather have you guys decide if you want to believe it or not. I think all information is good information, even if it doesn't make sense, you know, information that doesn't make sense or isn't realistic can, uh, can be used as to compare and contrast for a more realistic theory. So it ends up being a positive thing, you know? Um, but, uh, a lot of times law enforcement in situations like that, don't give the truth when it's somebody who's under 18. So I was just going to say that I, I really hope she is doing okay. I think if she wasn't in good health, they would just say we found her. Uh, yeah. But physical health and mental health are, are two way different, different things. Uh, yeah. So. I, I mean, I think that. They're just saying like she's alive is what I think they're saying. Yes. And I know, Tim, good news for a change. Yes. We need a nurse in here getting on his butt about it. I, tr trust me, <laughs> you guys don't got to sell me on it. I don't want to be on it. I I started it without reading the label. OK, and you saw me, though. You just thought that I think you just didn't believe me entirely. Like you're like, you just stop doing it. And I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I don't think so. I think we started at the same nope. time. Nope. I did it first and then you did it. And then I did it a second time like a dummy, but I got off of it cold turkey both times. One time I had to take antibiotics to get off of it. Yeah. I and mean, I'm it never does, using it does it sound like me. I, I usually have to do things for myself, no matter what people <laughs> say around me. Um, it's life experience, you know, um, I appreciate a I appreciate back? making mistakes. So a horseback on your nose. Oh, that's super funny. I, I should have. I should have wore that. Yeah, that's so ridiculous. But I hope she truly is doing okay physically and mentally and emotionally. Right. And uh, you know, for yeah. for those of you that are new, um, you know, I had a horrible, a horribly traumatic situation happen to me when I was young, you know, prepubescent, similar to her. I'm even younger than her. And luckily, I didn't remember it my entire life until my frontal lobe fully developed. And then all of a sudden, bam, all these memories hit me. My brain said, all right, you're ready to know this stuff, you know, so trauma can mess with you. Um, so I just hope that she doesn't have any of that. Um, oh, no way. What? So parents of nine year old girl who went missing on New York camping trip recovered or they received a ransom note before she was no found. No way. So I hope they were being nice to her, her captors, you know. That makes me feel better hopefully, because yeah, then, hopefully that means she wasn't assaulted like exactly, physically or, exactly, yeah. or that you know, like I've heard of stories where uh, they've people have kidnapped people and have actually treated them really good because it's about the money they're trying to get. You know what I mean? Um, so I I just I just hope it's a situation like that, man. Kid, Whoever it kids was. get to me and I know. Just because I understand trauma going through it myself, and it's just a horrible, horrible, horrible situation that can linger for your whole life. So um, anytime we can avoid that. I know. it's. I was worried about it the whole time. I was like, oh, no, this because it's. It was like a straight up abduction, and it's from within a campground, which is, I think, pretty abnormal considering there's so many people around usually in a condensed area and they i they had to have been watching her and waiting for her to be alone because she went on several bike rides like with the other little kids like they went for several laps and then the last one when she went by herself she got snatched and uh Jeez. yeah i know horrible and, you know whoever took her is a dummy because they literally left their fingerprints on the ransom note and their fingerprints were in the system. And that's how they tracked them down on yeah. the ransom note. What? Yeah, that is. I'm just really horrible. happy that she's home safe. 
and we're not dealing with another missing person that's going to end up being found in a, you know, being found somewhere, not alive yeah. anymore. No, I agree. I agree. So, all right, let's get into this. I'm glad that we had a positive. Yeah. I'm glad we had a positive story to kick this off with, but let's get into this. So we're going to talk on this, assuming that most of you have watched this. If you don't know, um, or we're talking about a topic that you don't know that we're talking about with the video, I'll do my best to um, explain it a little bit. But for those of you that haven't watched this, we aren't going to watch it because we have a ton of respect for Drip Drop and uh, I, the, the videos he puts out require a ton of editing, a ton of cutting, a ton of audio matching. Um, they aren't easy to do. So this is a brand new video and we want to help him get views on that video because we respect him as an artist and a content creator and, uh, an awesome internet sleuth, you know, in all the best ways possible. Um, so we're, we're not going to watch it on here, but we're, we're just going to touch on some of the topics, but make sure you guys go check them out. Give them some love likes the thought riot community comments. You know what I mean? So. So what do you think of it? I just thought it was very, very odd. Yes. And I, I remember seeing the cowboy hats before, and I remember seeing people talking online, um, kind of pointing to them, like, who were those guys? Like, what was up with that? Uh, but. Not what? late at all. That's uh, just, <laughs> I'm listening to you. But I, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I didn't, I guess I didn't think of it that much. Yeah. So if, if we're being completely honest here, the connection between the Cowboys in the picture and the connection on this last video here, hang on. I don't need that up. So give me one second here. Okay, so this last video here, right? The connection of the cowboys in here when he's talking about the what's that triangle called again on their hand? He shows it's the Volk. It's the Volk knot. Volk knot. Volk knot. Okay, so he shows a group of pictures here with the Volk knot. I was going to try and show the Why are we talking about the last the cowboy video? Pic because that's what it's talking about. That's a connection that he made right in the very beginning. This, uh, where are they? The pictures of the four dudes. Hang on. Did he change it somehow? Or no, because that would uh that's what that statement is about. It's gotta be right here. Okay, well, anyways, I, I don't know where it's at, but there is a picture in here that has four guys on it. horses, okay. Four guys on horses, four cowboys on horses. If we have any cowboys in the chat or cowboys listening, I'm sure they would they would be super offended being like, you know, all cowboys look the same. <laughs> but I feel like that's kind of what was going on there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just because there were four cowboys in a picture doesn't make these four cowboys the same guys. OK, what? I think the more interesting question was there is what law enforcement were these guys from in the new video? I think we need to give a, like a slight rundown of the video first. I mean, I, I think a lot of people did the homework and I'm going to tag it in this. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess we can give a quick rundown. Um, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to find the picture. <laughs> I just don't want to I just don't want to take views away from you the video. You don't need to so, take views. Um, 
I mean, I think everybody should go watch it. Yeah. Ju- I think a rundown is kind of needed. Just basic. General, yep. general rundown. Yep. I got you. So there is a part in this video and you guys will know what we're talking about right when we say it. So a few months ago, not a few, actually it was a month after the crime. It was uh, a month after the crime scene was locked down. I believe there were, Four cowboy ish dressing men that went into the crime scene, 1122. Um, and it looked like they were looking for additional evidence. It looked like they were, uh, here, I, I'll pull it up in the new picture. Hang on. Uh, it looked like they were looking for additional evidence. Here, here it is. Okay, and here's the picture. I'm I'm super lame. This is all on the new video. So this is the picture they're referencing, okay? Was this this picture here and then he starts talking about this here, which do you, I'll play it. This portion because this is the News Nation you guys remember this where you have four guys that were uh I don't remember what News Nation said. I'm pretty sure News Nation tried suggesting these guys were FBI, okay? So in the dead of night, these four guys entered 1122 to do what seemed like additional evidence gathering, verification, something like that. They all had gloves on. They were all out of uniform. Um, And I have major questions with this, like major, major questions. And I, that's, I, yeah. You asked Marshalls? I wasn't going to go there yet because I want to first be able to disprove the FBI thing. Um, because it, multiple people have suggested FBI. It is impossible, not possible whatsoever. Um, but these guys went in there hiding their face and under the dead of night. And as you can see right there, they're doing something in the rooms. And then watch this. This is them leaving. They're all going out of their way to hide their faces. Super weird circumstance, right? Super, super strange circumstance. I want to know what is on his neck here. We're going to have to find the raw video so I can blow that up in editing and uh, detail that. But that's something right there. And I'm curious what that is. I don't know if that's a camera. I don't know if that's a back of a badge. But none of them are wearing badges. Uh, I've watched this footage over and over and over, and they're none of them are wearing gloves. We- yeah, they're they're all wearing uh, crime scene gloves, not like leather gloves, but they're for a crime scene. Um, yep, no, no badges, no anything, and they are quick to get the heck out of there. Yeah, the way they hide their faces the whole time. The whole time, even when they're walking through the house right there. In it the is window. super sketch, okay? So, let me first explain why I know they're not FBI. I know they're not DEA. I know they're not like DOD, any of those main federal departments, okay? So, All of these departments have a dress code. It has gotten looser as the years have gone on. Uh, I think in the 70s and 80s, it was the tightest. But if you worked for a federal law enforcement agency, you were you had to be clean cut like you literally couldn't have a beard like this. You guys in the 70s and 80s. Now, as it's loosened up, beards are now allowed. But there is a very strict rule with all of them that your beard cannot be long enough to touch your collar when you're wearing a dress shirt. So could these guys be FBI uh, out of their normal FBI dress, which is a collared shirt? 
I guess they could be if they didn't have the beards. Now, these beards are not something like mine where you can just be lazy and grow it in five days. These beards, uh, they've been growing them for months. You know what I mean? These guys are not FBI agents. They are not uh, drug enforcement. They are not DOD, DEA, uh, any of the normal federal... Um, three-letter law enforcement agencies. Now, what's interesting, and I agree, I do think that it could be the marshals. Like, who was that that said it first? I think it was Elizabeth. Elizabeth mentioned the marshals. So I, I'm totally obsessed with the marshals, you guys. If I ever was to go into a law enforcement agency, it would be in the marshals. Um, but yes, I think that is possible i don't know if they just wanted to go in there to be a spectator though because the marshals would have none zero no reason to be in this whatsoever absolutely none of their job would have anything to do with this crime here unless they were trying to make some sort of connection to um I don't think our Discord invite is no, posted. I'll, I'll post it, though. Hang yeah. on. Um, I don't think that there's any sort of connection that they could have for what their job details are and this crime scene. So did they go in here just to see, just because they're law enforcement and they wanted to see exactly how bad this was? You know what I mean? I'm trying to come up with alternate theories that are more mainstream news type theory and less of could these guys be part of a cult, be in law enforcement and be doing something shady? You know what I mean? And hello, Rumsey, Bon Bon. Violet Casanova. Yes. Casey, hello, Joey. Hello. Um, so, so what do you think? So if they're not, can marshals have beards like that? Yes. Don't marshals marshals look... can. They okay, are but... literally the only ones other than undercover that have zero rules uh, for how they dress. They are... They're actually suggested to dress plain clothed. Okay, so what business would marshals or undercover agents have in the Moscow murder house? That's what there has to be something. If it's not a cult, okay, if it's not that, which I think the more realistic explanation is that it's not that, um, then what? Then what business do they have there? Like I said, I think there has to be something. I think it's very possible that they could be there in spectator mode. But like just wanting to look, observe, um, because you know, I, I don't know if that you can gain a certain level of experience in law enforcement being able to observe something like this i i don't know i don't know but remember like marshals don't really deal with murder investigations i mean yeah they do they do if the uh if the person that they're tracking managing whatever is a murderer i mean they have all the capabilities of doing that but they they just tend to be be more brute force in your face undercover type guys pulled directly from the military normally. Hmm. But I, I do think that's possible. And I'm so glad that he brought this up because I'm blown away that this hasn't been detailed in this light before, because this is super sketchy. This is super, super shady in this situation. Yeah, I'm tr I'm sitting here and all day I've been trying to come up with reasons. Right. And that's why I love crime circuses and, and, and drip drops videos is because they make me think, man, all I watch one and all day long, I'm thinking of alternate possibilities, the possibility of what he's saying being true and everything else in between. Hey, Riddler. 
Uh, Michael said, does does Idaho have another LE agency say like the Texas Rangers are different from other DPS in Texas? Just curious. Um, I haven't heard of one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Texas is standalone in that. And correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, but I think that uh, they did away nationally. They did away with the Rangers. They never were nationally. I'm pretty sure that they were mainly Southwest when they were around and everyone did away with them except, except for Texas. But I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm sure crime I'm sure Crime Circus does get a lot of haters, you guys, but um I we view the true crime community in a much different way. Unfortunately, we kind of get a lot of haters too. Um in if I feel like the true crime gets community gets so caught up in these little things of like what's important is solving crimes, the ideas, um justice for the victims and a lot of the true crime community gets so caught up in these details like oh my gosh how could you say that name wrong all you're doing is uh you know spitting on the memory of the victims when you're doing that like i've literally heard people say that and that's just absurd the reason why we're talking about this is because we want justice and we want uh the victims to be remembered in this situation sometimes things happen people aren't perfect man i'm far from perfect and i my job is talking okay my my whole life and career revolves around talking and i make i make mistakes every single day talking uh it doesn't mean something it doesn't mean we're putting somebody down it doesn't mean that we're disrespecting a victim it doesn't mean anything it just means that somebody had a slip of tongue that's it there's no additional meanings to it so i could see why crime circus takes a lot of heat in these videos you know he's asking questions openly honestly and uh pushing people to think a little deeper you know even if a lot of his theories like the the dude uh parachuting into 1122 i think he knows that that's out there you know but it pr it promotes thought it was and so that's ridiculous. important it is so ridiculous i know i, I was, was rolling dying. it was so funny it was funny. I think he just sneaked some comedy in there, if I'm being honest. I feel like he trolls. Yeah. Like, I feel like that was a troll. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it could be a troll, too. Um, but I think there's a little room for, for comedy and humility in true crime. Am I wrong in that, you guys? Like, it doesn't have to be so serious that somebody makes one slip of the tongue and, oh, my gosh, they're the worst person ever for the victim. No, anybody that's talking about the victims is doing a great thing, in my opinion. As long as you're not going out of your way to put the victim down and put people down, you are doing a great thing. You're continuing to live on the memory of those victims and fight for justice for those victims, you know, but yeah. One of the first comments we got on the stream tonight was saying that drip drop hides behind his makeup and he, um, I think he does, he, but he, not. Yeah. Which. Okay. Um, but he, uh, he defames people with his speculation and stuff. And, and that's a big, another big dividing topic in the true crime community. Is yeah. That, like all these channels will say, well, I don't want to dive too much into speculation here and then continue to dive into speculation. But as long as they appear like they're agreeing with the mainstream media and appear like they are agreeing with the police um, and the court system and supporting those entities, then it's all good. Yeah. Which is just dishonest, in my opinion. No, I I agree. I agree. I think like let's that... just be honest and say we're speculating. Um, you can't defame people unless you're spreading blatant lies intentionally to defame somebody. Yeah, that Discord. Is what defamation is? Yeah, <laughs> and and 
Yes, exactly. Exactly, LA. So literally everything that comes out of everybody's mouth, you guys, is speculation. So I agree. I think people get caught up in those details too much. Everything is speculation. Unless you're there with your own two eyes and you can prove that you were there with your own two eyes witnessing it with a camera behind you that aligns with the story that you're telling, it's speculation and there's no way around it. And that's why defamation cases, you guys, like defamation in law is is almost a joke to most lawyers because they never win they are there to scare people they throw defamation suits all over the place trying to look make something look like it's a big deal and scare people dude you they never, win. never win never they never, never win. there are three things that you have to prove with any defamation case you guys and that is uh, they have to prove that it was directed at you. They have to prove that the intention was to cause you harm. And they have to prove that they uh, planned the intention to cause you harm. They have to prove all of those things that essentially that you premeditated the plan to cause this person harm by lying about them. And most of the time, people are just speaking at off the cuff. You know what I mean? Yep, like, yep. just open conversation. Which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, he doesn't hide. He's created a character and sticks with it. And yeah. I, I agree with that. And I also get tired of that too, Bon Bon. Because I don't, I don't feel like that's true. Like, wanting justice, wanting the truth is respecting the victims. Even, like, we're all entitled to our opinions. Yeah. Opinions are good. Um, Opinions are good. And and one important factor, too, is that if someone has a different opinion of you or, or of a situation, it doesn't mean your opinion is less valuable. It They're both equally valuable. They're they're just different, you know, and it's good to have those things. And yeah, Ian, I, I don't blame him for putting on a costume and paint either. No, um, it. It, I, when I first saw it, I didn't get it. Yeah. But then after we watched we need to it, find that. I got it. We you need know to what find I mean? that first video. I'm serious. And send it to but him. But I see what you did there, Ian. YouTube can be a crazy world yep. out there. <laughs> Dude, I I love him. And the first time I saw him, yeah. I was so turned off by it, you guys. I I just didn't understand it. You had you had to watch a video. You had to understand what he was doing. And uh, you know, he makes a couple comments in some of his videos that um his privacy is important to him and that uh, you know, his family, I don't know if he has kids, I don't know any of that but you know when you're speculating at this level uh i'm sure that is there for his safety and i don't think there's anything wrong with that the online world is a crazy world you know there are people out there that behind a computer screen they they get wild you got a compliment I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I I totally just drew a blank right now. What's the saying that I always say? I don't know. Uh, um <laughs> what is the saying you always say? Uh I'm the I'm the wisest. It's uh Oh, that you don't know anything? Yes, I'm the wisest person in the world because I only know one thing and that one thing is that I don't know anything, you know? And that is odd. The Texas Rangers and that was like where Kaylee was moving. Violet Casanova. That's just, that's odd. So I have found a lot of connections with Texas, you guys. In um, And that quote, by the way, that is, uh, gosh, I'm having such bad ADHD right now. I am losing my words left and right. This is my ADHD in its prime. It's really bad tonight, but uh, it's the philosopher that everyone knows. You, Everybody knows, but that's their comment. The Amanda, you had to take your name off here because of weirdos? Yeah. Yeah, Socrates, Socrates. Um, so Brendan, Amanda, Brendan was just talking about how 
the cowboys uh can you pull up yes, the picture we'll get back into it, it was sorry. a it was a video um if you amanda if you watched crime circus's new video today then you should know what we're talking about um here it's we, the cowboys we can play this one more time just to get yeah. caught up so go ahead i but anyway these cowboys at the house brennan was just saying he knew that they couldn't be fbi um or what else did you say uh any of the federal law DEA, enforcement agencies DEA, any of them all of them yep um they couldn't be that because of their beards the or at least one of them yep. has a no, long multiple beard. multiple i think that guy right here in the black this guy's beard's too long and then the guy behind him has a beard too i you, thought that guy in the hat didn't have a long nope, beard look bam that is too long that will touch his collar that is not allowed this guy has an even longer beard and then the guy with the hood on also has a long beard watch but they hide beard beard, beard. oh wow yeah that is a long beard beard actually. beard beard and you you can in these federal agencies you cannot have hair that touches your collar so essentially it needs to be close to the skin like mine is right now most western state state police wear cowboy hats can police have beards nope. that long nope anyway we're saying they could be u.s marshals or something else yep that is like undercover or something like that but what business do they have being at the murder house and why are they hiding their faces because even hey, when they were Steve. in the home they were hiding their faces. Yeah, they were hiding their faces the entire time. So um, we were trying to come up with other theories, right? Because I think that uh, Drip Drop was suggesting there could be some kind of connection here to a conspiracy-ish type idea that... Uh, that they there's some kind of connection between this cult and law enforcement. And he never says that, but it's a leading idea. The way he presents it, presents it in that way, right? Um, but I do think there's other possibilities. I think that these guys could be um, marshals. And I think that if there is a secondary investigation going on, um, because they have a lead on somebody, because they have questions, because of this, that, and the other, uh, I think it's very real that they could be there. And maybe these guys have worked undercover with law enforcement. I don't know. What's interesting, though, is like when the FBI targeted the Hells Angels, okay, in, Cal in Southern California, I used to hang out with uh, Vagos and Hell's Angels. And there was a time right, right after I stopped hanging out with a lot of those guys, they got targeted really hard by the FBI. And it ended up turning into a Netflix special where uh, this dude uh, infiltrated and, and became one of the, the main members, like he became a management member in the Hell's Angels. Well, the FBI recruited him from the marshals and it it ended up turning into a netflix series where they ended up faking ending somebody with a gun where like they had to dig a grave and they used fake blood with uh, a gun that had um yes yes because he needed to be able to prove that he's not law enforcement right and the just doing drugs in front of them, which is like the classic thing that people go to, isn't enough because Hell's Angels know that federal agents are 100% allowed to do any drugs undercover if it risks their life and nothing bad happens to them. They absolutely can. That idea that federal agents can't do drugs, that's not true. They can. 100% they can. Oh, like drug addicts be like, show me you're not a cop and do that dope. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And they can do it. If yeah. they're, if their case life or somebody else's life is in jeopardy, they are totally allowed to do it. Um, so, so uh, I don't know. these bikers know this and it's not enough. So they want proof by like ending somebody or doing a very serious crime, an aggressive assault type crime. And he, they set it up in some way where it was like on a video or something like that. I forget. I haven't, I haven't watched it in like a, a long time. What was your like point of this story? 
Um, <laughs> Do you even know? Bon Bon uh, asked what social media site was erased from Kaylee's phone. Chief, hi. Didn't oh, see come my in. point. My point. LinkedIn. My point was I'm... why marshals might want to hide their face because they are or have been undercover agents. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and and other law enforcement agencies use them as undercover agents. Got it. So like the FBI, that was an FBI sting on Hell's Angels, but it was actually a marshal that went undercover for the okay, FBI. Okay, so their faces cannot be known. Is I mean, what you're saying. So um, anyway, LinkedIn, interesting. I remember you guys talking about that the other night. I wonder if that has any significance. Uh, hello, Unravel. And there was, we probably missed a ton of comments in the meantime. But yeah, my bad. I, I don't know how long they were in the house. Does anybody else know that? It was three weeks after the murders. Yes, good Good call out. Three weeks after. That's right. Because there wasn't even boards on the windows. So no, okay. and they hadn't had, had they had not cleaned it up yet, had they? No. I didn't think I think so. they I think at three weeks, didn't they get um items for the families, but not the actual cleanup job, I think. Michael said he saw that special wicked show. Neeks Peaks. I've I've seen a little bit of Neek's Peak stuff, but to be honest, I haven't seen a lot, but that's awesome. I mean, that's great. If you guys find this interesting and in what we're talking about, we always promote every other content creator, you guys. We are not one of those people that are like elbow room, make room for us. No, we'll promote everybody. So, you know, go check out Neek's Peaks. We'll have to do the same. Yeah. Hey, Venera. Thanks for stopping by to say hi. I hope you have a good week, too. Um, yeah. <laughs> what? She was just laughing at me. Um, I think Branson. Stephanie said, I think if you look closely, at least one of them has long hair tucked into his cap. Uh, and that's something you would see it with marshals, dude. Hmm. I, you know how many marshals I've seen and or met that are like the grungiest dudes ever. They're like straight up '90s grunge rock dudes. Riddler said, "Those who visit or live in Branson might start to notice Branson Police Department officers looking a little different. Officers can now wear cowboy hats and have facial hair year round. But Dude, is there a Branson. rule, Branson? But have you like? Do you know how long it can be? Like, if there's a limit on length? Yeah, I think cowboy hats have been allowed even in California. Um, when when I grew up." And, and lived in Southern California, some cops wore cowboy hats too, but um, nobody, even the sheriffs, the sheriffs were known for having like beards, but they, they didn't go like more than a half an inch off their face, you know, it, it, nowhere near their collar. You, there was still neck space in between. Look at that dude's beard right here, you guys. That is the beard right there. You see that little... That's a big beard. That is a six month or more beard that he's committed to growing. You know what I mean? But I'm assuming these guys have to be law enforcement, right? How would they get the okay, be videotaped, and enter this crime scene in this do way? Think, do undercover agents grow out all that facial hair and long hair so that if their cover gets blown or like if they need to not look like that person, they can like cut their hair and shave their facial hair and look like a different person. No, no. Um, Cause like it, it changes, it changes your appearance a lot. Spe speculation here because I wasn't in the military. Um, so, but I've known quite a few people. I'm pretty sure they recruit mainly from the military. Okay. And for, for a lot of reasons, military guys end up liking beards. And I've heard that when they're out on tour, they, they grow their beards. And so when you go through a time when you have thousands and thousands of military guys out on tours like Iraq or, you know, Middle East stuff that we always have going on. <clears throat> 
all these guys will grow out their beards on tour and they end up liking them and bringing those home. So I think that this is probably their preferred look. I mean, beards are still in, you know. I think there's more intention behind it. Uh, maybe. I I don't want you to think that like all these marshals are 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 here to be they undercover. They just all like being hairy. That yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you. I think okay. because they're all military. But okay. I bet the out of the amount of marshals there are, you're probably less than five percent of them are actual undercover guys. Let's see. Uh, Riddler asked, "Did anyone get their license plate?" Did I it? don't think they would have showed that. Someone tried saying so. Oh, they blurred it. Yeah. It's blurred. Someone tried saying because uh, Drip Drop focuses on what's in that guy's hand. Somebody was like, well, those aren't gloves because that guy walked to the trash can, but there's still snow on the top of the trash. If that guy would have opened that trash can, um, there the snow would have fell off. Watch. Come on. Right here. This this guy right here is the one who ends up getting in the back and is there's question marks around what's in his hand and pocket. Look, it looks like he's going to the trash, OK, but there's snow on it a lot. He didn't go to the trash can. He walked right by it. Well, hang on. There he is. So there's. There's focus on what those are. I think those are gloves. I think they're gloves Realistically, too. like that, that's got to be gloves. Yeah, but he does have like a lot of stuff in his pockets. I, I agree. He has a whole bunch of stuff in his pockets. I have no idea why. Like multiple pockets Look, are bam, bulging. Bam, bam, I know. Like what do you got in your pockets, dude? Every single pocket. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um And... We plan to talk on Kopaka eventually, you guys. I see quite a few people making comments. The The big deal with Kopaka is, is there's an active investigation right now that is there a bunch of question marks around it? Absolutely. For any normal police shooting like that, um, I think the average investigation is six to eight weeks. We are now in the nine or 10 month mark or something like that. And it's still not closed. We can't get any of that information until that case is closed. So we've been waiting until we can get actual factual information around Kopaka to touch on that topic. Otherwise, everything around Kopaka's theory, you guys, everything, we can't put any factual basis into anything with it without that. The way he's walking with his head down, man, it's just... You know, I listened to one one content creator a while ago talk about them in here, and that guy with the hat supposedly has been in there before, and the way that he steps up on that four-inch step, because where they're walking right now is that four-inch step. You can see them step up right there. Uh, someone was speculating that they knew that that four inch step was there, meaning they've been in the house before. They weren't like, oh, because it's a random single step. You know what I mean? Hmm. That's a oh, badge. That's interesting with Michael. That's a badge that he was wearing. I around his neck. Yeah. I don't. But it's it was black a it was a background. Yeah, it was a lanyard with like a card I, on it. And that's I'm pretty sure that is the normal martial badge is is around their neck that's like the martial mo but I, I just can't see it here michael would probably know more having family you know in the marshals yeah he said they never had beards <laughs> yeah i'm trying to see right there yeah isn't it odd amanda like every single pocket Oh, ESP twins again, Amanda. She said, I spy a lanyard. <laughs> You're probably typing that as I was back. saying it. Look. The yeah. only thing I can think is maybe that's one of those leather holders so, that go around the neck. 
so um why shoot him so quickly they let that guy shoot for two hours one thing i want to say is we're dealing with two different police departments yes we are um and they're very different yes they, they operate are. very differently so yeah. i don't know it could just be it could just be policy i don't know it when, could be the commanding you know officer or the chief of police like whoever handles that and tells them what to do um they may not have like one police department might be better at de-escalating the other one might not be yeah um i don't know there's a lot of factors i feel like that could go into yeah that. and uh and and let's be real here like team behaviors whether it's law enforcement or it's a sales team or whatever, all those come from above, right? So one of the things that Malia and, and myself have watched on here is how the police treated the local area students and people pre-crime and post-crime. And something has changed. I think that it's very possible they realized like, oh, shoot, the whole world is watching us, everything. Yep. They're watching our body cam. They're watching everything. And their entire tactics, the way they hold themselves, the tone that they talk to people, everything has changed, you guys. Everything. They know they're under a microscope now. So that guy that shot out his window for two hours. I personally don't think that's a good comparison because they are different now, way different. You can see it kind of right there, Michael, but we'll go to the shot where they're outside the lanyard. Um, which yeah, I, that's a good one. You might be able to see. It little... looks like it's backwards or it's one of the folding leather ones right there. Look. Yep. It, it looks plastic. See man. it right here on his neck? Yeah. It's it's a lanyard. It's like a black lanyard and then it looks like almost like a like black leather holder. I um, I feel like it's plastic. We just saw light shine off of it. Oh. Yeah. Well, and it, there's a white card in it. It looks rectangular. Not circular. Yeah. It's just really, really it's odd. It's strange, man. I just, it is strange. Is, that's just my main question is what business do they have in the house? Like, that, how could they be involved? Did that lanyard flip? How could they be involved? I think it. I think one side of it's all black. So maybe it opens. Okay, so hang on here. Look, there's one side, right? And then... They do look like ID cards. And Are... then it flips. Wait. And it's identical on both sides. Wait, is anyone else wearing one? No. So no. Michael said he's using the cover for some reason. That is not normal. Yeah. And here, Lori M said, on duty... One duty of marshals is seizing illegal assets. Doesn't that imply they were there getting drugs or something? I don't know why else marshals would be on scene. They don't process crime scenes, which was my point. Like, what other reason is there unless there's something there that is illegal, that is involved in something they would have interest in? I agree. Not just a murder scene, but there has to be another element here that we don't know about that hasn't been released to the public at least um that would interest them for some reason I gotta go and we've now. been i mean the drug theory video you know we throw out the possibility of it being a drug house and also the you know the whole mom situation but that makes me i don't know if, if these are u.s marshals it it almost makes me wonder if that's has something to do with it if this is three weeks, Koberger was arrested December 30th. Yep. So this is three weeks after. So was Koberger, I wonder if Koberger was even on their radar. Do you, would it be possible that he was on their radar at this point? Like we just didn't know about it. And these guys were involved in like tracking him down.
Is that kind of ridiculous to speculate on? Okay. Ready. Ready for what? I could turn it on its head. Uh. All right. So. Hold on one second. What? Sorry. I have an I wanna... idea that can turn it on its head. I wanted to see what Michael was saying. The guy in the hoodie is a marshal. Okay. Uh, here. His card is visible when he's by the trash cans. Um, which one? The guy in the cowboy hat? or? And Amanda said, what if it's just five guys who are acting like they belong there? I mean, I think it kind of is, but... They might be law enforcement or something. Oh gosh, but news like I don't I don't think so. I, I No, they wouldn't come there. See, I was saying, is there any way Koberger was on their radar and they were involved in tracking him? So they don't shrivel in the sunlight. <laughs> I didn't think they would be involved with it either, to be honest. The hoodie guy by the trash can. Okay, let's let's go back and see. When they're walking out. Oh, you're right, Michael. His badge is visible. Let me Where? slow this down. Oh, you have it slowed down all the way. Yeah. Where? The guy, hoodie guy that's in the back. He's going okay. under the tape. Oh, yes. Good eye, Michael. Yeah, that is good. <clears throat> That my, was a good eye. My other theory was who would be in charge of private investigators? Do you think they would allow private investigators in the house at this time? Or is it too early? I don't think these are PIs. No, I, I think that law enforcement has to be with a PI at all times. They aren't allowed to just freely walk in on a crime scene. So uh, I was wondering if a couple of them could be PIs, right? We've heard of the families getting PIs, things like that, um, because they didn't have a lot of faith in Moscow PD. Um, could it be that? So Melissa Moon, hello, uh, said U.S. Marshal is needed for extradition via U.S. airspace. Brian was flown back to Idaho. Is that oh. is that true? Like they're needed to be to extradite uh, using like airplanes? I need that's what that's something I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know if marshals handle every um, every suspect move. I'm not sure. I don't know. I didn't think so because I can remember that that guy that came from uh what was it? That was brought here from our base in Cuba or Puerto Rico or whatever and I know FBI were the ones who uh who transferred them. Right. This was before he was arrested. Yes, 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 yes. I was just wondering if he was on the radar and if they could be involved in tracking someone out of state, but that I still that feel like that doesn't really explain why they were at yeah. the house and like rummaging around and things. Um, did these guys have to show credentials to enter the dwelling? Not that we're aware of. No, no. no. Um, and Michael said, no police state police can transport. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and I saw this comment. Didn't they pretty much get in and out fairly quickly, like looking for specific things? It kind of seemed that way. Yeah, but the, we don't have a time frame on this video. No. We, I can try and find it here. Get, let me see if I can find the raw footage of it. So, um, cowboy law enforcement. I mean, enter one one two two king. So Miss Kelly said, yes, true. They use U.S. Air Marshals for that reason. My cousin is Marshal. Hmm. Yeah, if I if I ever wanted to be in law enforcement, I think Marshals would be the way to go, man. They have so much freedom and. They get to do the hunting. That's so cool. Here, let me let me look. Yeah. Yes. You're bet you're usually better at finding this stuff. So um 
law enforcement 1122 king at night what was this was that news nation yes okay and they like to copyright strike <laughs> Yeah, well, I just won't use any uh, audio. Hmm. Um, I will. Yeah. Absolutely. Welcome everyone who's new. Welcome yeah. to the show. Yeah, and Amanda, I thought the same thing. Like, there's nobody even there for them. To seemingly to show their credentials too. It's right. just the news station. <laughs> right. It it just feels weird because they are hiding their identities. Oh. It, it feels strange. Bonbon, bon, they were calling them FBI. Dude, I, that's where of I heard it they from. Were. I'm telling you, that's where I heard it from. I thought so, but I didn't want to say that because I couldn't remember if it was another content creator or not. Dude, these guys are not FBI. They are not FBI. Go back to the video just so I can look for any identifiers that I can search for. Exclusive News Nation. Right. Yeah. I, oh, like what they're titling it? Yeah. Ah. Uh, you have it slowed down to snail pace. <laughs> yeah. Just do normal. Exclusive. Murder Mystery News Nation exclusive. That's, it looks like that's it. If you see anything yeah. else pop up, just let me know. I mean, who's that reporter right there? Do you know who that is? I, I do not. I don't Joe. think she's not a Miss Kelly. Popular I, one. I don't think ISP can even have beards like this. Um, there are very, 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 very few law enforcement agencies that would let you have a beard that touches your collar. That's the rule of thumb now, even for the agencies that allow beards, um, which I, most of them still suggest against it. Because if you have a beard long enough to grab hold, you guys, that, that's an issue in encountering people. Also, if you're in a position where you might need to put on a gas mask, um, like a lot of tack teams and law enforcement do, a beard can mess that up. A beard can mess that up. That suction on the uh, on the gas masks. That's why I, I I'm pretty sure it's just the Rangers and um and Marshals that are that lenient on it, where they don't care what you look like, like. Yeah, FBI, I think, is even more critical. I don't think that it's allowed to, like, be off your face. I think they're even more critical with the FBI. Exactly, Michael. Yeah, exactly. Um, law enforcement tend to follow military somewhat, right? A little bit. I know the military is, like, you don't have a choice. This is how you're going to look. Um at least through basic, you know, until you get into field and everything. But, um, but yeah, yes, marshals, marshals have a ton of funding, a ton of funding. That's why I, I feel like the marshals are probably the coolest law enforcement, in my opinion. They got a ton of funding. They can look however they want. Um, they get any amount of firepower. They almost have no rules hunting people. <laughs> You know, they are the law enforcement hunters, people hunters. So most of them, I think 90% of them come directly from military recruitment. Look up investigators inside Idaho murder house Thursday night. Okay. So in the beginning of this, they, they, um, 
They titled everything. Ah, they titled. I think you got it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, you did. They titled everything murder mystery in the beginning, though. Like really? All, all That's kind of shady. Idaho murder mystery is what they titled all of their videos in the beginning. Yeah. That's. You, you know what's super weird going back to like with the topic that we were talking about how like critical the true crime community is is the mainstream news is so like flamboyant with the things that they say and the way they represent victims and uh and families and the crimes and then you have people in the true crime community that approach it with real respect you know and they're so hypercritical of each other while you have mainstream news who is like says whatever they want dude yep oh bailey sarian i love her she's awesome that says murder oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's the name of her show yeah she does makeup while she tells oh, true, true crime stories and thank you bon bon thank you we found that because of that yeah thank you very much <laughs> this here yes awesome i appreciate that i just saw that they are investigators for the idaho state police i i would be shocked if they were you guys the beard thing the beard thing well, let's see it let's see unless they're subcontracted i mean we aren't gonna have sound that's fine Let's see what they say in the beginning. I like turkey. Uh, yeah, less than an hour ago, we were here. <laughs> they said I like uh, turkey? No, no. What? Then why'd you <laughs> say that? I was just going to like, you know where you say things and the, the lips don't match? Mad libs? I, I guess, yeah. Oh, you're talking about reading their lips? Yeah. And it looked like she said, I like turkey? no i'm joking <laughs> okay jeez yeah less than an hour ago we were here and about five plain clothes five not four five plain clothes investigators and they don't know if they're local state federal they were inside and we saw a lot of activity inside the home and the home was lit up so we were able to peek in some of the windows <laughs> But we saw those men inside the home in the two particular were the where the murders took place. We did not see them leaving with any material. I asked them a couple times, why are they back? They did not answer me. They pulled away <laughs> in two vehicles. One had a Washington state plate. The other had an Ohio. Oh, wait, Ohio, Idaho. That's it, yellow. They must be saying Moscow, Idaho. Yeah. But n no, that doesn't make sense. We did see a lot of activity. This house was lit up for nearly an hour. There you go, you guys. They were there for an hour. That's that's nearly, good to know. Nearly an hour. They wouldn't respond at all. We don't know why. Nothing seemed to be removed. But as you, you know, Ashley, yesterday, a lot of kids' belongings were removed by Moscow police to be returned to their families. Bam. That's exactly what we were wondering. Yeah, but they weren't there to get stuff for the family. No, but that gave us a timeline. So hmm. like 20 minutes ago, uh, I, I made the comment I... that I think this was right after it was before the cleanup, right after they got belongings for the families. Mm, okay questions and were they effectively just ignoring you did say hello they didn't say anything at all not a peep and i asked him specifically why are you here tonight and they didn't acknowledge her so they were on a mission and they left without saying a word so nancy i just want to point out the video that's seeing right now let's blow this up full and let's replay that if we can this investigator walking out of the kitchen area into the hallway and then walking towards the living room looks like they're walking towards the front of the house 
I mean, they they were going to the Xana and Ethan bedroom. That's where they were going there. Actually, two of the signs in the house. It's very confusing. There's a good vibe sign lit up. Offices. There's also that same grassy good vibe sign right down there. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. DEA. Um, I don't I, I'm pretty sure that the DEA follows the same rules that the FBI follows, but let me look it up real quick. So DEA grooming um regulations. <laughs> DEA <laughs> mandates a scraggly beard and long hair. <laughs> So uh, this did pull up here that uh, ATF beards are not authorized for agents and may not be worn in Class A or Class B uniform, honor guard, recruitment, public affairs, sector, and headquarters, or temporary assignments, unless otherwise authorized to do so. So definitely not ATF. Um, and mm -hmm. FBI's in the similar way, too, from what I was looking at earlier. Uh, what I was looking at earlier was that the FBI, they can have beards like mine. Like, that's about it, you know, well-groomed. You have to be in a conservative business dress. Are conservative business dress appropriate is, I think, what it said. DEA. Uh, I'm not getting anything for DEA. Can't be reached. What? The DEA.gov site can't be reached? Yeah, it's because of the VPN. Oh, okay. I got you. DEA grooming. What, why don't you just look up the dress code? Uh, grooming is separate from dress normally. Yeah, but it might be included. Maybe. I probably need to put drug enforcement agency. Hang on. Yeah, I don't, I mean, the cowboy hats, I could see a lot of different law enforcement agencies wearing cowboy hats. Like, really, it was only one of them wearing a cowboy hat. Um, yeah, it's because our VPN bounces us all over the world. So these .gov sites don't like that. Yeah, I just think Brendan's whole point with the whole undercover cop thing is mm. like, if, I mean, undercover police can have beards like that? I'm, I, if you're undercover, you need to match whatever you're going undercover with. So you can look however you want. I mean, you, so. If they're with, undercover, why are they wearing badges though? I don't just think so they they're can go undercover. The I don't think they're undercover. I do not think they're undercover at all. Yeah, Michael, they think they think you're a Russian. <laughs> Who, the, me? the website. Oh, yeah, they they do for sure. Um, yeah, I don't think these guys are undercover, you guys. So that that's why I was trying to clarify what I was saying earlier, where um the uh the marshals tend to be the guys that go undercover for other agencies. It doesn't mean all of them do. It does not mean all of them do. Yeah, I'm not finding anything for DEA. That's super strange. Maybe they don't really want that information out there. <laughs> what grooming I don't standards? Know. Maybe no. they don't. Because uh, they don't want you to. Uh, they don't want you to be able to tell an agent from like a normal person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I maybe I 
I don't know. Maybe it, they don't think that's important drug, drug for the public agent, to know. Drug enforcement agency is very federal. These guys are very federal in office spaces. They are not just out in the field all day like the marshals are. So I would assume that they align similar to what the FBI is. When you're in the DEA, you see most DEA agents with a collared shirt on. I know they're kind of moving to the polo look now and away from the suits 100% of the time. Time, but uh, anything with a caller, I would be blown away if a federal agency allows a you know six to twelve month beard when you're wearing a collar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hey, Sergeant, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good night, Riddler. Yeah, have a good night. And um, appreciate it, Riddler. Yeah, I what the DA is woke now. What a comment. <laughs> right. I think all of them are trying to. That's why the FBI even lets beards at all. You know what I mean? Um, because when you look at what the FBI expectations were in the 70s, 80s, and probably even 90s, like you had to be clean shaven. It was military standards. You're like my hair is too long on my ear. You know, if you have hair touching the ear problem if you have beard hair problem if you can see stubble problem you know what i mean so um it I, it literally says on the fbi's website that you're expected to be able to conform to conservative dress standards so blue right <laughs> they, they've got to be navy though and they got to match your wing tips all right <laughs> you got to do a wing tip beard pattern yeah chief exactly the way they're hiding is just so sketch and i remember this being talked about back in the you know in the day um but i don't know i just didn't pay that much attention to it at the time <laughs> hi j ray yep beard equals woke I mean, maybe for some people, right? In California, I think. I don't know. Probably not, but. So, um, going back to this, though, it's just so strange. And it it this is going to be one of those topics, right, that um, Drip Drop brought up here. And I, I, I need to shout it out that... Uh, Drip Drop, if you're watching this, we want you on the true crime talk show, my friend. I know you have your persona that you got to match, so we can do pre-recorded or pre-planned questions, whatever you need, whatever you need. So that would be awesome to get drip drop on here yeah i've okay. noticed i've noticed he's been pinning all of our comments on the videos and stuff like that and and we try and bring him uh views because like i said in the beginning of this we we respect the hell out of a man and love his content and the last thing we want to do is take views from him so make sure you give him all the thought riot love on his channel you know give him some views watches and all that good stuff Yes, Ian. I can't wait to watch it in Discord later. <laughs> the one last night had me dying. I was laughing so hard. And thank you, guys. We appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I know. I'm so excited, Amanda. Um, and to be fair, Sarge, I feel like a lot of information out there leads nowhere and has big holes. I mean, this whole yeah. case is full of dead ends and holes <laughs> yes um so I, I think just anything that brings us provokes thought provokes thought yes um and you know makes us think about it and maybe look at a different angle is it's worth something even if it ends up going nowhere in the end at least you can rule that out but it's a good point <laughs> mm. yeah violet <laughs> i want to highlight that comment. and just just a reminder too guys so we did just finally get this up 
Um, so uh, every every night that we're on here on the True Crime Talk Show, we were able to nab that name, which I'm blown away that somebody else hasn't got that name. But we got it in everything. We got it in YouTube. We got it in Gmail. We got it in every single podcast provider. We are on Spotify, Apple, uh, all of them, Google, uh, Amazon, uh, whatever the pod bean thing is, all of them, literally, literally all of them. We are on all of them now with the true crime talk show um, and thought riot true crime and criminal culture podcast so if you get a chance hop on here give us a rating we appreciate it and uh yeah awesome 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 to be here and doing this with you guys so okay give this to me now <laughs> um so what? same michael i like the, i like the boom right I, that's to us boom um Dude, he but cracks also, me up, man. Violet said this case is a whole. <laughs> I listen, I agree. I agree. And you know the worst part about it too, you but guys. Why is, are there holes though, Casey? I know. The worst part about it is I personally, this is my own take, you guys. Like, while it's while it's not fun because there's nothing fun about being a part of a crime where four people lost their lives in the way that they did. There's nothing fun about that, but it's interesting thinking that, Hey, we could have a major conspiracy on our hands here, right? Where like there are a ton of people involved, everything from the prosecution to judges to uh, random marshals and cults and police and like, FBI and all these things more than likely you guys my theory is it's a few officers you have a few officers that have messed this whole thing up that that have done similar tactics to what we see in the Dr. Moore case yep. and it might be the same officers you guys we Could have be. since proven that there is a pain connection in the Dr. Moore's town. What's the name again? I'm having an ADHD. Bonner's Ferry. Yes. Holes. Bonner's Ferry. So Payne, who found the knife sheath, has a direct connection to Bonner's Ferry. 100% confirmed. Okay. So complete theory here because I don't know. I wasn't there. But uh, if the officers that were involved in Bonner's Ferry were involved in this with the same kind of tactics, these two or three officers would have and could have caused this entire crap show. You know what I mean? Oh, you want my Illuminati <laughs> confirmation? Oh. No, it was me. <laughs> she was talking about. Um it's it was this one. <laughs> so that, Illuminati. That was the one that had you make me sick. <laughs> Man, I was just trying to go for sexy nurse and I get clocked I for sexy Illuminati. Librarian. Or yeah, sexy librarian. What, what nurse does that? <laughs> I mean, uh... um, I think Ian said, I think with real law enforcement, most of their leads wind up going nowhere too. That's why you have to do so much legwork. And I think that's a really good point, Ian. Agreed. And that's that was you make that point a lot is like not hiding the information, even if it goes nowhere, even if it's BS, Agreed. you know, at least you can rule it out in the end. Like you yeah. can't, you can't find the real <laughs> truth if you don't find all the lies first. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, you or all the non-truths, I guess you could say. Yeah. But, wrong information helps reconfirm the right information. Right. That's why it's important to talk about all of it, right. including like, the the wild theories that drip drop provides are they wild absolutely could they be true absolutely w more than likely will they i i mean i don't know but they can be here for confirmation on other things too you know or they'll end up being yeah. true and that'd be insane like yeah and I, the pca had a ton of holes a ton do um, yeah. yeah yeah they got 19000 tips and so do we yeah. Uh, the crypto hat. Thank you for bringing that up, Lori, because I knew there. I knew that I knew. was strange. <laughs> that is strange. Yeah. I knew there was another thing that I wanted there. to talk about, and it's that hat. Hold on. 
this trash you should criminal see if you culture. Can log in here. How do I yours. do that? But Let me um, see. look, Amanda said she's unsubbing right now because <laughs> we're Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> but okay go ahead no it i don't want to try to figure that out right now no so. i'm not doing that right now um wait what was i oh the uh uh the currency what was it called it was a, it was um hex coin yep bro you know what's funny though is i think drip drop was intentionally saying Steve's last name wrong because of all the 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 saying names wrong issue in the true crime community. What? Pull that up. What is that? What? Hex Buzz? That's literally their website, is it not? They put an article up on their website about it. A member of the Hex family has suffered an unspeakable tragedy that has become highly publicized. Whoa. Didn't mean to do that. Who's so that? that's not a theory then. This it's real. confirms it. Dude. Go I back. Need to, uh, hang on. Who's What's Wall Hex? Is Bob Pale? I mean, I, he surely he saw this already. I don't know. It's not working, but it's all right. I'll just it's bookmark it. Just bookmark it for later. Okay, hold on. Oh, there oh, it is. There we go. No, delete one. It popped up before. That one. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah, I just I needed to send it to them because that they can't see here, but uh, this like they can see now. Yeah, that that's confirmation. I just wanted to tag drip drop in it because the way that he explained that is he was wondering, right? It, it was brought up wondering is is he wearing this for a reason? Does he have a connection to hex coin? And this says he does is this somebody just creating a connection i i have no idea a member of the hex family has suffered an unspeakable tragedy that has become a highly publicized new national news story steve gun drip drop's gonna make me say the last name wrong uh, Steve Gonsalves joined Fox News this week to discuss the ongoing investigation into the murder. He wore his hex hat during the interview. Okay, let me see this. Yeah, hang on. Okay. Yeah, the fact that it's called Hex is really strange. Um, message. Am I blind? Hmm? There's no message? I would worry about that later. But I'll forget later. Nope. I, I think... Can't be messaged. I think it's a follow back thing. No. He doesn't follow anyone oh okay yep okay that's okay we'll go back to what we we're doing and i have it copied so i can go 
here. All right. So hang on. I don't know why my browser chat isn't updating. There we go. Okay. Message. I want to know if Steve actually, if he has actually invested in Hexcoin or not. Yeah, I just had to send it over to uh, Drip Drop real quick. Okay, okay. So um, the Hex hat is weird, right? Now we can get back into what we were talking about. Strange. Yeah, I just want to mention Odinism isn't a cult. I just want to like say that. <laughs> <laughs> why why i think that it i don't think I, it is so at all this goes back to what we were saying where odinism itself isn't a cult okay because it is a belief system similar to christianity in their eyes right whoever follows that now are there cult odinists or cult odinism yes absolutely the 100%. We see it all over the place. It is a belief system terrorist organization in some areas. Like that if if that's not a cult, what what is? You know what I mean? Mhm. Mm I mean, do you? Are you paying attention cuz you just said it wasn't a cult and you I, just agreed that it was. No, I see how it could be classified that way like in certain respects. But usually a cult, like when, when you think of like classic cult, that's like Is there a, classic a good example cult like Westboro? Like, like Charles Manson created a cult. So well, usually, usually or like the FLDS, like okay. the guy, okay? Yep. That's like a cult. Yeah. Odinism doesn't really have like when we're talking about what we're about to be talking about this week and what I found and everything we're going through, it there's not this strong central leadership oh, to it. I I don't know if you need that with that cult idea, dude. That okay, so we've talked about this before, you guys. So and people are also mixing up the cult thing with like ritualistic sacrifice when well. Most cults don't do that, like magic, satanic, well, ritualistic wait, sacrifice type. That thing. doesn't have anything to do with it. That the way you worship doesn't mean it's a cult or not a cult. Um, so that doesn't have anything to do with it. They could do magic, they could do sacrifice, they could do praying, they can do anything. All that can be in a cult. Um, but what I think makes it a cult, right? And not all Odinists believe this, you guys. This is a very specific type of odinism which i won't get into the name of it we'll save it until we do that topic um but uh it it is they have this idea that i've already shared on here once that they believe that they have the single one direct line of pure blood that is pre-christ okay and they believe that this line that is pre-christ uh started and and it was this family that that were true Odinist or uh, a a satruist, right? Am I saying that right? A satruism, a satruist. So uh, they believe that they were true a satruist or a satruism up until fourteen sixty something or fourteen seventeen or something like that. And the Catholic Church came in and was forcing everyone to turn to Christianity and Catholicism and they grabbed this family and it was, there was no father. It doesn't give any details on why, but there was a mother, a daughter and two sons. So there were three kids and the Catholic church forced her to uh, denounce her religion of Odinism or Satruism and uh, claim that she was Catholic or Christian. She wouldn't do it. So they burned her at the stake and made her children watch her. Well, her children were then forced to proclaim Christianity in the town square, and they did that, but then moved their asatruist, Odinist, 
beliefs into back rooms and dark hallways and, you know, forests and things like that and continued this religion and protected their their pure bloodline that doesn't have anything to do with Christ or Christianity. So if that's not a cult belief that what? Is there a group of dudes out there that's literally tracking a tree of people from the 1400s until now? That sounds like culty. Yeah, but <laughs> you know? but they can Okay, but they can say that with it can be a cult-ish belief, okay? And they can say that and claim that without any real evidence for it and just make that claim to make it make it fit with their racial narrative and the only people who are talking about this pre-christ bloodline and it being the one true white religion is are, are racist Cultists. they're racist okay they're not in a cult wait they're, they're gang i don't know why you're trying to separate those they're two gangs. that's not that has nothing to do with it so cults can be criminals they can be criminals. I mean, most of the time they are. So you can be in a gang and still be a part of a cult. I think that in the Richard Allen case, I I don't know why you're like hung up on this idea that they're it's almost like offensive calling them a cult because they're actually a gang. What if they believe that their actions are being made because of their religious beliefs. I say cult. I don't think there needs to be a leader. Okay. I do not think there needs to be a leader. You know, a satruist look at Christians and say cult. There's no leader. There's no leader with Christianity. I just usually then it, there needs to be a different word. And I'm not saying there needs that to be a different word then because a cult usually is some a group that has a cult leader that's driving them in a very specific direction and they have a narrative. They have there's something. I don't think there needs to be that. I know that there are experts that have come on um and said that like oh well in order for it to be a cult it needs to be this 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 and this i mean i think they're coming out like that to try and devalue what the defense has put out there does it really matter if the defense calls it a cult or calls it a gang is a group of people that potentially did something horrible one of the worst acts that you could do does it matter if it's a cult or a gang like they're both a problem they're both a group of people. They're both driven by different illegal uh, goals, you yeah. know? Yeah, I get what you're saying. So and I don't think it matters if we call it a cult. This this is an issue, okay? Like, I don't want to make it not seem like it isn't an issue because it is. Like, this is a very real issue, and I, I fully realize that after digging into it, that this is going on in the undergrounds of America and most people do not see it because we're not really told about it. Like these people exist. Yeah. The people in Delphi, the memorandum is alleging exists. They are so, very real and they are in almost every state in America. Jay for justice interviewed a, uh, an Odinist. Okay. And, uh, if, I still haven't been able to watch that. I really wanted to. I really, really wanted to. I only got to see five minutes because we had time like right before I we were watch doing. It. Yeah. I only had like five minutes because we had a short time right before we were doing our long forum podcast, which is like four hours of recording straight. You know, it's four hours straight of just talking, but um, it seemed really good. And it, 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 I feel like that paints a better picture of what Odinism is or as Asatruism is um, in, in a non-cult fashion. Because I, I don't think that I don't think that any of those things matter, whether you call it a gang, whether you call it a cult. They did the same thing. They're a group of people driven by a single idea. Uh, and goal, right? So I couldn't care less. I think that maybe the defense called it that because you guys got to got to remember. I don't know. I don't know how many of you were on here, but 
we we found evidence that literally could break this case the uh the delphi case you guys evidence that has not been called out yet it's evidence that we're reaching out to the defense personally to share and uh it is it's insane if it ends up working okay and it, i won't go any further than that but it, it be, because of what you're saying makes me wonder if you're going that direction because we found that and that could be proof. But even if that ended up being cult related, I don't think that it changes any of the narrative. I think that it could be a cult or it could be a gang and it holds the same issues, holds the same weight, and the evidence can be used against them equally. Yeah, it could be. I just think, I think them putting Colt in the mem memorandum gives a very specific, like it paints a very specific picture, which I think is what that Colt specialist that I was telling you about was trying to, was basically trying to say. It is like a brotherhood, Steve. It totally is. I, I think that is more, I think that's a better description than Colt. Well, I, bro I feel brotherhood like is a non-criminal word a brotherhood is like i the reason why i'm nodding my head is because yes there is a brotherhood out there similar to uh a satruist and odinism that uh Sim not similar what do you mean that's a religion yeah i, d I don't want to go too hard into it but that that's that is that's an elementary way of of saying it in the way of like crime okay i don't mean that in a bad way i think a brotherhood can be a positive thing not a negative thing that's why i uh that's why i'm having a hard time putting brotherhood to it because okay, i think okay. that these people are criminals so for me i don't care if you call it a gang or a cult both are criminals, right? Both of them are taking advantage of people. Both of them are doing criminal acts and, and crime, but a brotherhood can exist without, you're right, it can't, a criminal brotherhood can exist. Um, but I also think it can, can exist without being criminal, where a cult cannot exist without being criminal and a gang cannot exist without being criminal. So you're so I yeah, mean, that's that's what I'm saying. I, I must be saying it backwards because that's literally what I'm saying that that's why I'm worried about calling it a brotherhood because it can be positive or negative where I think a satruist or Odinist could be a brotherhood. Just just that the definition of that. But talking directly about the people involved in this crime I don't think we can call them a brotherhood. I think that they need to be called a gang or a cult is what I'm trying to say. Okay. <laughs> you know? That's funny. Sarge said, I started the cult of Malia. It's pretty hot, LOL. <laughs> That's yes. funny. You do. You You have like dedicated viewers that will comment on videos specifically about you. <laughs> I'll get with a cult of Malia. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Why not? Crime Circus cult. I'll just have a channel called the cult of Malia. <laughs> you should. <laughs> that would be super funny. It would be. Um, But yeah, I think that. Oh, Ashley. Ashley had a good comment what? up here. So. My moronic ex thinks he's one of them, an Odinist. He thinks he's superior and Odin is God and has satanic worship tendencies. Um, from what I gathered from one of them, is it okay to kill people whenever you feel like it because you're a God yourself based on my observation of his narcissistic tendencies? Bro, like, that's really interesting, cult. Ashley. Cult. When, when you're justifying <laughs> your religious beliefs to harm another person, yeah, that is a cult or a gang or a criminal. And I, I'm I hope that doesn't offend you, Ashley, because I'm I'm not trying to offend you. Thanks but, for sharing that though. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a super good thing to share in life experience, but um 
Yeah, I think I think any belief system that justifies harming others is a major problem. What do you not? What do you not see that? I was reading. <laughs> do, do you not think that a belief system that justifies harming others is not a cult or a obviously, gang? obviously, and obviously their belief system is like something they've taken Odinism and then they've added their own ideas onto it and basically created their own belief based off of Odinism. Yeah. So, I mean, or there's guess, always been two factions. I guess if, because I really feel like it's a gang. But if they have religious beliefs that they're following and they use it to justify murder and they have these, it's an ideology. If they have this ideology they're following and they're like a criminal gang at the same time, like that doesn't sound like the Crips in LA. That sounds more like a cult. Yes. Or the cartel who's just worried about making money and, and, you know, criminal activity, like they're not following this ideology. What well, I mean, what if money is? Why does it have to be a person? Money's the ideology. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I see no difference. So what the cartel's a cult now? Uh, no, I'm not saying that, but I think that it can be I think that there can be correlating ideas of that because they they're not a religious based group yeah the religion is the part i was just saying like i right. guess since they're a gang and with the added element of like a religion and ideo ideological belief then i guess i could see them classified as kind of a cult but that's why i was like there almost needs to be a different name because when you say cult there's very specific defining factors there's like a, a list of it needs to have these things to be considered a cult and I'm I'm pretty sure like an organized leadership is one of them. And they don't really have that. Are you sure? Not that I'm aware of. They could, and I they, just don't know have about a leader. it. <laughs> kind of. Uh, I mean, they they do. They have a leader. And that leader is just like it it's like they're a faction within a within a religion right yep see cult is a fairly specific definition like needing to isolate members from the community did a paper on jehovah's witness meet all accepted definitions of a cult yeah the isolation is a big one you're right Lori. and i don't know that this i don't think they do that uh, oh, maybe from I don't people know about that out, man may, i guess because I the, guess maybe people outside of the race. I don't know. Because, okay, now I feel like you can go a bunch of different ways with that because it doesn't have to be physical isolation. It can be ideological driven isolation where the rest of the world is crazy because they believe in Christ and all this other stuff when we're gods ourselves because we believe in the only true gods that in my opinion that is ideological isolation from the rest of the world that's a stretch i think is it when belief is like the strongest motive that humans have how is that a stretch i don't know there's a list. I just want to find it. A list based on what? Because my vote is cult. I just, I know that there's a sp specific parameters they use to According define to if who? this is a cult or not. According to whoever the authority is on cults. I don't know. People who study it. Like cult experts. Okay. So the term cult refers most often to a group of people with usually atypical beliefs living in relative isolation from the world. They tend to centralize around one charismatic person, the cult leader, who orders the beliefs, behaviors, and customs of all the other members. Many cults stand in as de facto new religions for their followers, but some are irreg irreligious in nature. Oh, I mean... Oxford languages, we looked this up last time, a system of religious veneration and devotion directed towards a particular figure or object. 
a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices that's regarded most, by others strange or sinister. That's the most basic definition. That's not the defining characteristics, though. Like, like this is what it says. Extremist beliefs. OK, so they have to hold very dogmatic and extreme beliefs. Check. They are also unable to question the belief systems without fear or reprisal of punishment from the Check. leader or other group members. Isolation from society. As soon I mean, as new members join a cult, other adherents work hard to isolate them from family members and friends. This helps fulfill the mind control aspirations of the leader. It could be. It checked. also creates a hive mind of sorts between the new person and the other members. Veneration of a single individual. That's the third one. Charismatic leaders are often at the center of most cults. Consider the Manson family of the late 1960s, as their name suggests they adopted the beliefs of their leader, Charles Manson, and fulfilled his request. The same pattern repeats in almost all other cults, I'll bet to less violent ends in many cases. So there's doomsday cults, political cults, religious cults, sex cults. <laughs> yeah. I, that's dude, I think they fit religious. I do. And I also think that they could fit political, too. That's just my opinion. So uh, the yeah, way that I look at fine. cults is if they have a belief system, a religious belief system that gives them the ability to harm other people in, in a negative way, in justifying their harm of other people in my opinion that should be classified as a cult all day long i don't know i can see your point like i can see it but <laughs> that's just how i feel about it and i think that's where the defense is coming from too did j ray just make a dirty joke <laughs> funny yeah that's that's where i think the defense is coming from too and i think it's important to look at it from the defense's perspective because the 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 reality of the situation is they put this document out there's no going back from it so we either think that richard allen based off the evidence we're seeing is innocent yeah. or we think he's not if we think he's innocent does it benefit the situation to argue whether it's called a cult or a gang? Because does it matter what name you put on it? Uh, I think in court, it's probably going to end up mattering. I don't. Because yeah. it doesn't change that these this group of people made decisions and conspired together to harm another individual for something they did. Yeah. I, I personally don't think it will. I, I don't think that matters at all. I think that it's society getting caught up in this idea of, oh my gosh, it's a cult. There's no way we could have cults out here. This is so crazy. This is so what? Like, okay, is that really important? Is that the important part? I mean, I, yeah. No way. It's kind of weird, honestly, that I saw a lot of people being like, oh, it's so, dude, a cult, like, come on. I'm like, We've had tons of cults. What are you talking about? There's probably tons of cults like operating right now under your very nose. Like, I mean, maybe there is. I mean, look at Scientology. It, it, it look depends at Jehovah's on, Witnesses. It look depends on what Mormon. you classify as a cult. I think that if you classify Scientology and some of these other places as a cult, I mean, there's no way that th this group isn't. They're doing the same things just not nearly as organized i mean they have a leader no not yeah, really not they do. really brian whatever that is literally the leader yeah i'm just curious how involved he is we'll we'll see we'll look into it more he's involved enough to get online and make statements representing that group and faction i mean that that's a leader. If if they're this thing, then there's a leader. You, because you can't be a gang without a leader. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, they usually have a leader. 
Ian, if Malia's the prosecutor, then the specific cult criteria matters. If Brendan's the prosecutor, the criteria don't matter. <laughs> it's just situational fog of war. Yeah. I, I think it's important to, to argue these points, though, because I do think that this, yeah, these Ian. arguments are going to get brought up. That is very rude, Sarge. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Take it off. I'm kidding. Okay. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. I feel like we're just going to have to learn more for me to really be able to make up my mind on that. But I don't feel like they do isolation the way a typical cult does. So I don't I know guess. if they could be really considered a cult for reals. I guess. I I don't know. They don't I, have like a compound. If they had like a compound. You don't need a compound. You do not need a compound, dude. Manson, the family was a, a They a had cult. a compound. No, they were a cult way before their compound. They were a cult yeah, before the compound. Yeah, but they all compound. stayed together in a house. That's a, I mean, they traveled the together in society doing crimes. What? This is literally what we're seeing here. Yeah, but I don't think these people literally stay together and live together. I like don't that. think that's needed to be considered a cult. I think that that's clouding the vision mm. of the defense's point. Good night, Sarge. Um, Spawn Ranch. Was that the name of the Manson Ranch? What was the name of the Manson I don't Ranch? Know. I don't remember. Let's see. So what what is Hex Coin? Because I don't really get that. Is there any way to find out who's invested in yeah, Hex it's Coin? Spawn Ranch? Mm. Um, I mean and Hex why Coin. Would... It, is fake it's literally fake yeah it's, i get it doesn't it was a mean scam. anything it was a scam no 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 no. it's not even that so hex coin is still able to be bought hex coin is still around it is still going on you guys like it is you can purchase it right now okay um so did steve get scammed no hex coin was made with the intention of acting like gold does and being a holding for your money. So like, let's say you have $10 million and you don't want it to just sit in a bank. You want to invest it into something that uh, could grow or decrease in a similar fashion to how gold does over time. And that's Hex coin. It can't be used for purchases. It can't be traded. It can't be anything. It is like a stationary monetary coin for holding your money, I guess. What? Yes. That's ex that's what it is. So it's not a scam? Yes. That is totally a scam. So you can never get it back, right? No, you could get it back. You can get your money back. You're setting people up to fail because once your money is in a market, it is now manipulable. Man manipulatable. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's manipulatable. And um, I would love to know what his point is like what his role is in this is it considered a ponzi scam steve said ponzi um yeah ian maybe steve's just into witchcraft and likes hexing people it 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 depends on uh it depends on it It depends on... Uh, I know, he's so rude. <laughs> I am. I am such a misogynist. Um, it depends on how the leaders are managing the coin. If it's considered a Ponzi scheme. So this is something new. I'm honestly super surprised that People have never done this before because it's almost a way to squeeze money out of people that don't understand how markets run with 
with very little proof of history. Like it would be very hard to prove, even though the um, even though they've been slapped with a lawsuit already and it's pending. So I just want to know why he's wearing the hat. I hear you. And I don't <laughs> know. The only way that we'll be able to know is to find out what his buy in is here. It's a good point, Stephanie. Lori and Chad Daybell were pretty much considered a cult. I don't know. This, I don't think they went on an official cult list or anything, but they did have like that whole belief system and they did isolate themselves. Does it count if you're only isolating yourself? I mean, they aren't <laughs> isolated. They're as isolated as this as this other group of guys. I'm telling you, I don't know. I don't know what expert came on and made people think that a cult is only this rock solid thing where you have a group of people that separate themselves from the world and they all just walk around all day with their Kool Aid that has uh, whatever that for ending themselves like that it that it does not need to be what is that was required such a to be a great in a cult. description <laughs> i mean everyone understands what i'm talking about because of that cult that was in mexico or whatever that moved from texas or new mexico or whatever it was and they ended up literally ending like hundreds of people with their little kool-aid with whatever chemical is in there i forget what it was right now cyanide cyanide yeah thank you ian So did that Jake Paul dude make hex too? Uh, right, 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 for real. Um, looks like Ashley knows some things about this. What's the Wizard of Lies, Ashley? I'll have to check that out. Um, but yeah, I I just don't think there needs to be that concrete of lines on what a cult is, because when we look at the definition here. Like, I don't know. I don't know why. For me, that it, if I have to look at this situation, for me, it looks like the prosecution hired that expert to go on a social media and TV campaign, minimizing what the defense put out. That's what I think is going on. Because I don't think there needs to be that hardcore of rules. I think people are getting bought into a prosecution tactic. The People's Temple. I actually just saw that listed on this website that I was reading that cult stuff from, Ian. I mean, it's a gnarly one. It is. it is. I know. Jim Jones, a charismatic preacher from the U.S., formed the People's Temple to spread his own flavor of Christianity before moving to, how do you say that name? Right here. Guyana. Guyana. There he founded Jonestown, a compound for his religious group of followers. They died by mass suicide in 1978. Yep. I never heard about this one, though. The unification church that began in South Korea. That's funny because we just heard about the, the, the Korean um guys the soldiers of christ or whatever that the had moonies the, that had that girl in the trunk remember yeah they but were korean yeah they were yeah so this here the soldiers of christ that had that girl in the trunk yeah 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 I outside gotcha. the spa yeah so you're talking this here it came out right here. Bam. Yep. Yeah, this is wild. You you know someone came out and corrected me like they were super offended that I called them soldiers for Christ. And it was uh, a Korean account. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so what's their actual name? Soldiers then? of Christ. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um that's odd. Yeah. It's super super They're like strange. get it right. We're soldiers of Christ, not for Christ. <laughs> yeah. Dummy. Um purple passion, we I I understand what you're saying. Um I so Brendan has ADHD and sometimes I, I take a back seat so that he can get his thought out because if I, if I cut off that train of thought, he will forget everything. 
that he was going to say. Yeah. Like, everything. And then he'll be like, where was I? And he'll just be lost. Yeah. I, I think what pe people... We like, just know each I, other. I well. wasn't offended. I, I hope... I was joking because of all the comments we get. So we've known each other forever. So like we we can communicate and talk and go through topics without even thinking like it, we don't even have to think about it. It just meshes, you know, and I feel like a lot of people uh, like that. And that's why a lot of people are like, are you, do you how long have you guys known each other? Are you guys like brother and sister, you know, <laughs> I think because of that, because it's an unspoken language of what we're doing. Um, I was just joking because of how many people are like, Oh my God, can you believe how he's treating her, you know, and trying to make yep. like slides that I'm a misogynist when it, Oh, if you guys just only knew me, you know, I am yeah. literally the opposite. The train will lose its destination. Exactly. Amanda, but look, Michael said agreed. And look at what Ian said. Michael TRL is a place for alternative viewpoints. We don't tolerate agreement here. <laughs> That's super funny. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That should be that should be one of the quotes in the intro video from Ian. Yeah. It'll have a quote. We don't tolerate agreement here. Yes. TRL is a place for alternative thought. We don't tolerate <laughs> agreement here. But without the just kidding. No just kidding. <laughs> yeah. He almost put you in timeout for that, Ian. No, I was trying to copy it. How dare you? <laughs> I was trying to copy it. I didn't even realize. I'll take a screenshot of it. Put it in. Put people in timeout. I didn't. Oh, I've already put. I've only put one person in timeout so far. But that's because they came on here and called us all a bag of D's. <laughs> Literally everybody in the chat, us, everybody, just a huge bag of D's. I mean, I that guess was only worse one time. Things you could be, you know what I mean? That was the only like comment that I felt like it was disrespectful to everyone. And it was like, I don't know, it just was not a good comment, like at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, to have for sure. on there. There's just nothing productive about it. There wasn't any information brought. Why does he wear his hat all the time during interviews? Right. Yeah. Um, it's odd. I No, I agree with you. Uh, hey, Rumsey. Exactly. Hex mining, but these guys, Hex isn't mined. What? Don't, don't buy, don't ever buy Hex, you guys. What? Just don't. There, it doesn't have anything value behind it. There is no value. You're better off putting your money in a bank, man, in, in a, a high return savings account. Honestly, 10,000 hex used to cost 57 cents. Now they're worth 82 bucks. Hex is changing lives. Okay. Delayed gratification is the key to success. What? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Delayed gratification is the key to success. Yeah. In personal development and investing. Hex incentivizes you to use time to your advantage. Oh. What? Miner, what? Miners earn rewards daily. They can mint them all at once at the end of their commitment. This multiplies their art. Oh, so this is like a CD. That's what Ashley was saying. Yep. No way. I didn't know that. So you're committing to put it, putting your money into Hex and then you're like expected to promote it. And if you promote it and get the value up, then you get a bigger return shady shady that sets the owners up 
to invest and pull out anytime there's major increases. They could just ladder it all the way up. Yeah, you're speaking a foreign language to me. Yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it, it's just a way of inflating the price. That's it. So if you're super rich and you said, you know what, I want to buy $10 million a hex, you put in 10... <laughs> You take that off the screen. I am. You put in ten million dollars of hex, and uh, it will it'll make the price jump up, and then you pull that out at a higher price because other people are buying in. The hex hat Steve is wearing in my mind. He's sending a message to someone. That's that's kind of what Crime Circus was. Um, I let you know, like kind of hinting towards, uh, not really hinting towards. He was pretty much saying that. Um, I just wonder who that could be. I because it's I don't know who. I just wonder. Because that, that's how it kind of seems like that's what it kind of seems like to me. Because I don't know. Does he do you think he really would invest in cryptocurrency? Who is Steve just doesn't strike me as the guy to who's this? invest in cryptocurrency, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know who that is. It, am I am I just super lame? Who is this, you guys? Do you guys know who that is next to Steve in I'm, this picture? I'm just trying to figure out if it's a hex person or a family member related to the crime. Because new theory, maybe Steve just likes the hat. I that, don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. Because I feel like that's not the case. Because like. Dude, they blasted him all over this do you site. Think, do you think they were like, hey, you're about to do a bunch of interviews, wear this hat, and we'll pay you a bunch of money? I know that's a crazy thing to say. I know. I know. And I'm sorry already. But uh, Stain I, I don't lost think there's anything wrong with that. I, I think even if he did do that, there's nothing wrong with that. I just. The family attorney. I Steve comes off as such like Shannon Gray. So so emotionally driven uh into like protecting his daughter's image and the justice that that she deserves that I I would just be surprised if that's the motive for wearing it. I would be surprised if he doesn't have some sort of buy-in. How do we know he didn't just put his money into this? Did he get conned into it? Maybe. Uh, Rumsey said she did go watch the video. Good. I'm glad you did the homework. <laughs> uh, oh, the crime circus? Yeah. Uh, Rumsey said those four men in the video are federal agents. I believe they have Stingray equipment with them. Sting we were just debating that, Rumsey. Stingray is huge, uh, Rumsey. Like, big. They wouldn't be able to conceal that with them. And I don't, I don't think they're federal agents. I think that if anything, they're going to be marshals. Yeah, I think that would be it too. Um, based off what we were talking about with like the beards and the way they were dressed, it, it does feel more like marshals. If they are a part of like federal law enforcement, then it, I think it would be marshals. Too. Yeah, here's a theory. So pre Koberger did. Did did they ask the marshals to come in because the marshals have been tracking some kind of criminal that has a similar MO like huh like uh the lad and uh the whatever their Juten? Juten case like there's some kind of money connection No not money connection that so I'm trying to come up with other reasons why those marshals that we believe they are oh, could have oh, been there. Oh. Could they be there because they're tracking other crimes or criminals that have a similar MO and they ask them to come in and get their expertise on this crime? But do marshals do that? I, do they study serial killers and try to catch serial killers? I don't think you killers? need to study serial killers. I think that's basic police work. 
Yeah, but I don't not think Marshalls, work. I don't think Marshalls are involved in like anything serial killer or murder related like that. Yeah, I think so. I don't think so. I do. Michael, are you still in here? We'll, or uh, we'll Miss Kelly? Up. You we'll guys are the up. people who know things about Marshalls. Good night, Ashley. Good night. What is the U.S. Marshal's job description? All right. The duties of the U.S. Marshal Service include protecting the federal judiciary, apprehending federal fugitives, managing and selling seized assets acquired by criminals through illegal activities, housing and transporting federal prisoners, and operating WITSEC. So apprehending federal fugitives. That's why I Ask their asset forfeiture, tactical operations, prisoner operations, mis missing child program, uh, sex offender investigations, fugitive operations, transport transporting prisoners, justice prisoner, and alien transportation, and judicial security. Hmm. So... It could be the transportation of BK then, and they just wanted to see the crime scene? I mean, it could be, yeah. It totally could be, I guess. No, because BK wasn't arrested yet. Yeah, but he, but was he on the radar? That's what I was theorizing. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We were just wondering if Marshall's like... uh ever really deal with like murders or like serial killers yeah it sounds like they pretty much in that situation would only be involved if they needed to transport asset forfeiture i agree i was sitting here thinking about that while we were talking um yeah we're just talking about the u.s marshals again michael you just you and Miss Kelly seem to know quite a bit about it. Yes, yes, yes. I just was curious if they ever were involved in like serial killer operations, like catching a serial killer. Yeah, like federal fugitive. It does um, seem sketch. It does very much so seem sketch. And for everyone that's in here too, um, if you haven't hit subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you can get alerted and come hang out with us more regularly, more often. Um, we do this four days a week and have daily videos that we release. So we'd appreciate it and would love you to come hang out with us. Hang on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I saw you guys mentioning um, Amanda said that Steve said in the 48 hours he's 100% open to it being another killer, and other and others were talking about that too. Bam. Um, that is the YouTube memberships that we just got set up not long ago. Sorry, I interrupted you. Hold on one sec. I just. I think I think he I think he means that when he says it. I just wonder how much he knows. Like, you know what I mean? And I wonder if he has any anything that's pointing him in that direction of it being somebody else. I I think that yeah. The interviewer did ask if he was open to it, and he said absolutely, or something like that. Like, more than just yes. He was like, absolutely, of course, or something like that. And then they asked the wife, and she she didn't want to say it. Like, uh, she literally didn't want to talk. And he was, Steve was like, it's okay. It's okay. You know? And, and then she was like, mm -mm, nope. Yeah. I'm not open to that. No, I, I agree. I think that 
it makes me it makes me nervous. Yeah, and that's kind of the impression I got too, but I'm not sure. It 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 makes me uncomfortable watching them because of how nervous appearing their body language is when they're in front of a camera, which makes me feel like we might not be getting their honest opinion in this situation, right? I think that with the gag order, as long as they're talking about the mainstream narrative, they're for, for the most part, they'll be left alone, right? They won't get much pushback. But if they start asking big questions and start putting a microscope on law enforcement, the justice system in that area, I think they would start having some issues. Yeah. So I don't know if we could get the real story, you guys. I don't know. Yeah, I think he sees the case in more reality and isn't buying the BS investigation. See, I he wants cameras. He wants cameras, you know, but wasn't he involved in like law enforcement in some way? I think I said that a while ago, and I don't think that ended up being the case. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there was anything from that or to do with that. So, okay. See, because I was wondering if, yes. if he, huh? The we've had a lot of people make comments similar to that, um, that, uh, you know, it's just like talking and hanging out with friends. And I love that. And I appreciate the fact that you posted that comment, Gio. Um, that is our goal. So we want to be able to come on here and talk with you guys. And I swear I am trying so hard to figure out the phone number thing. So you guys have the ability to call in too. We're going to get it. We're going to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. But what were you saying? Sorry. I don't know. Oh, you interrupted me. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, oh, him being involved in law enforcement. I, like if, oh, yeah. if he was, you which I, you're saying he probably wasn't, or that ended up not being true, then he would be able to see flaws in the investigation much more clearly than a civilian would most likely. I mean, I don't know if that's true. You guys, I don't know if that's true when it's your own kid and you know how investigations are supposed to work. So no, 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 no. I, I think you're thinking I'm meaning something different than I am. So I think that you can be a regular person and have the ability to be intuitive to certain situations and have the same kind of visual ability to see crimes or holes in the story or an ability to question certain things that need questioning. And I don't think you need to have a police background to do that. No, you don't. You yeah. don't. But when you know what the standard of practice is and you see it not being followed in certain areas, Got it. you can call Got those it. out. Yeah. Being close to the situation. Right. Got it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't see anything. So I Yeah, but don't... you can't find anything about his past on the internet. I've already tried like a lot. Really? You can't find anything about that family. And I guarantee you it's because they've scrubbed the internet for their past. Um, maybe. Yeah, of course you would. Yeah. A lawyer would probably do it for them. Like, look, this case is getting a ton of attention. You can't have stuff from, you know, your college days or like your kids. Like, because Google harbors a lot of information, dude. Yeah, it does. Like, you can search a lot of people's names and find where they went to high school. You know, if they ever won an award, obituaries from their families, like all kinds of things. Yeah. Like almost everybody in that Delphi memorandum, I found like everybody online, something, at least something on them that gave me and pointed me in a direction about them. Like I've done a lot of digging into the people in that memorandum and it was not that hard at all. Yeah, <laughs> no, I... They said, Steve said, it's one big kumbaya in here. And then Amanda said, except we changed the lyrics of kumbaya to kumbaya Malia. <laughs> 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 Girls are good at the internet, Amanda. Yes. <laughs> Wait. 
Did I? Look at this comment. Right. You didn't his, highlight his, it. His hex hat more. Yeah. He wants cameras so he can get his hex hat more exposure at the trial. That's super funny. Yeah, it is. I just want to know the why. I mean. So badly. It just... I, I think that what we said was the real why. I think that either he's a part of it or he has money in it and he's stuck. I think those are the only two options. And the only way he's not going to lose money. So let's say he puts 10 G's in. So all Hexcoin has been doing is dropping. So if you want to just get your money back, you need to get other people interested in it. And that could be all of his savings. Like that's not an uncommon story in the stock market. You know how often you hear people that take their entire 401k and savings and just, they got great information from their friend and have no idea what playing long is, what playing short is, what any of the, the trade combinations are or anything to do with anything. And they put all their money into something because their BFF told them that it's a sure thing and they lose everything. That's like all the time, all the time. Wait, what? Oh yeah. And we just put this one out too, you guys. So a little bit of a, a mix up change of pace. This story is crazy. The Gonzalo versus Danello, the differences in an escaped prisoner and how it's managed, right? It is wild. It, it really is. It is wild. It makes me look at the Gonzalo Lopez situation and appreciate law enforcement, dude. Well, yeah, because the way that Den Den Danello's uh Danello Lopez or wait, wait, Gonzalo Lopez, the way that ended is horrific. It is yeah. literally worst case scenario. Yeah, horrible. Um, Horrible mass ending. Uh, Cynthia said, I heard several months ago, Steve Gonzalez was involved in crypto. Hmm. Interesting. Has this just several been months ago? In the background. Well, he is on the Hex website and they did say, Cynthia, yeah. I don't know if you saw that. That a member of the Hex family suffered an unspeakable tragedy. So maybe he really is a part of it. Kim said, um, just getting here, please give me a quick recap. So we talked about um, the agents, agents that were in the 1122 King Roadhouse um, three weeks Whoa. after the murders. Talking directly about uh, Drip Drop's video. Drip Drop's video <laughs> talked about them. Um, it's... I had this it on one? the right one. This yeah. one? Yep. Okay. That's News Nation. That's not yeah. Drip Drop's video. It's not Drip Drop's video, no. But, but it, yeah. it, it is the, the four guys. Yeah, we're talking about these guys, talking about who they could be, why are they there, um, and also the hex hat, because Drip Drop also brought that up in his video. And I... Look how secretive they all are. We recommend everybody watching it, you know, after the stream. Um, you know, it's just questions, question marks. Yeah. Question marks why something's being managed like this, how it's being managed, like what's the benefit in this situation? Are these marshals? Yeah, and we talked about Odinism quite a bit. <laughs> That's true. And cults. Yes. Um, so it's very interesting, but... <laughs> Oh, Ramsey joined the Discord. Yeah. Yay, Ramsey. I'll get on there uh, after the stream and, and welcome you. No, I heard about SG from another creator saying SG made millions in crypto. So, wow, Cynthia. Yeah, that's incredible. Leslie said she heard that about Steve, too. Yep, we're talking about the Cowboys, which what people brought that up um, before. 
I know that this was a big topic at one point. I, was I it? Get, yes, I get, this isn't new. Like, this isn't new. But Drip Drop's shedding light on it, um, looking at it from the viewpoint now and what we know now, obviously. Yeah, I mean, if and I would have saw this whole theory. Yeah, if I would have saw this then, I would have had big questions then. There's no way I wouldn't have because it is so uncommon. Be It's such uncommon behavior. The hiding their faces, like going way out of their way to hide their faces. Yeah, the way they're hiding their faces is really strange. Um, <laughs> they're wearing those badges. Yeah. Why? Yep. And there's five in there. There was only three there. So what was Drip Drop's video about the hat? Did he say what his theory was? Because I don't even remember. Yeah. So the person that made Hexcoin, his last name is Gonsalves. So he was theorizing if he has some sort of connection, some kind of relation to him. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I remember. Let me see. Creator. I do remember that. Of right. Hexcoin. Gonsalves. Let me see. Hang on. I'll figure it out real quick. Where... It was right there. Hang on. Okay. One billion and... Hold on. Almost there. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to figure out what the name is of him. But I'm telling you, the last name is Gonsalves. <clears throat> so. He made the connection from the last name. There was. Flavio. Yep. There we go. Okay. The SEC. So. Flavio Gonsalves. Whoa. Yeah. Three men charged in a hundred million dollar cryptocurrency fraud. <clears throat> Miami, Florida, a South Florida federal grand jury today indicted Emerson Pyers, 33, and Flavio Gonzalez, 33, both of Brazil and Joshua David Nicholas, 28, of Stewart, Florida, in connection with a global cryptocurrency-based fraud that generated around $100 million in revenue from investors. The indictment charges all three defendants with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit securities fraud. The indictment also charges Pyers and Gonzalez with conspiracy to commit international money laundering. According to the indictment, Pyers and Gonzalez found, em, founded Empires X, a cryptocurrency investment platform and unregistered securities offering. Pyers and Gonzalez, along with Nicholas, Nicholas the company's so-called 
head head trader fraudulently promoted Empire's X. They misled investors about they misled investors about, among other things, a purported proprietary trading bot that they claimed could generate guaranteed returns to investors in Empire's X. As alleged in the indictment, Pyers and Consolvis then laundered investors' funds through a foreign-based cryptocurrency exchange and paid out early Empire's X investors with money obtained from later investors in a Ponzi-style scheme. And that's what Steve was talking about. Exactly. I hadn't read this before, what? but yes. Yeah, so they were pulling money out before it was there to like in profits to give them. So like if you invested $10,000, the leaders would take $5,000 out early of that money to pay themselves, um, knowing that later on down the line, they'll be able to pay you back with other money coming in. Juan Antonio Gonzalez, U.S. Attorney for Southern District District of Florida, George L. Piro, Special Agent in Charge, FBI Miami Field Office, and Anthony Salisbury, Spe Special Agent in Charge, Homeland Security Investigations, Miami Field Office, made the announcement. <clears throat> Our office is committed to protecting investors from sophisticated scammers seeking to capitalize on the relative novelty of digital currency, said United States Attorney Gonzalez. As with any emerging technology, those who invest in cryptocurrency must be beware of profit-making opportunities that appear too good to be true. The technology has changed, but the crime remains the same. Piero, special agent in charge of FBI Miami, unscrupulous fraudsters are nothing new to the investment world. What's changing is they are now pushing their criminal activity into the cryptocurrency realm. Investors beware. Conduct your due diligence before investing. The FBI would like to commend Homeland Security Investigations for their close cooperation on this case. This case should serve as a warning to any individuals who look to illegally capitalize on the perceived ambiguity of the crypto market to take advantage of innocent investors. Said special agent in charge, Anthony Salisbury, HSI will continue to work with our partners to pursue anyone who utilizes these types of schemes to victimize would-be customers. Mm. That's not Hexcoin, though. Yes. No, it's Empire X. That that held hex coin that kicked it off okay yeah empire empire x is a cryptocurrency investment platform which held hex so if it's a scam then why why is hex still around don't know like probably if, probably because it's like in the stock charged. market Probably because it's like in the stock market where the fines are easy. Like you'll make $10 million in a fraudulent trade and get fined a million. Hmm. You know what I mean? But it's, it's still super interesting. I am blown away by it. testimonials let's see do we see anyone <laughs> this guy yeah <laughs> it looks like you a little bit me <laughs> what oh wait mouth closed Tell me if you guys see anything. <laughs> Joe Hexotic. Actually, that guy looks more like you. This guy? No. No. Who? <laughs> Go back up. Go back up. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually meant that guy. But... 
this guy? <laughs> the really red guy? <laughs> Is there I was pointing at? Hexican girl? What? That's what her name was. Dude, people are getting hex tattoos? Life choices, guys. Yeah. Five, five, five. Five? Five, 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 five. What? Five. There's more people with five, 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 five tattoos. Yeah. Uh, this is wild, man. It's totally FTX style. Yep, hexagons. Richie. I don't see anyone that stands out here. Do you? So what was the name of the thing? The platform? Of what? In the article you were just reading. The platform you are saying that held Hex. Um, Empires X. Empires X. Yeah, they have too much on here, man. I was going to try and find Steve somewhere in here, but there's just too much, man. Yeah. I'm sure Drip Drop is going to continue to work this, you guys. I'm I'm curious to see what kind of connections are there, you know? Mm -hmm. It is sensory overload. Like, that's their whole goal. That's what they're going for. Oh, wait. It kind of looks like our screen. What? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, Gina. Oh, Gina, haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. How are you? All right. So what? No, we haven't seen it yet, Gina. We're going to go watch it. Um, but it, we're talking about this because Drip Drop talked about Steve wearing the hex hat. I, I don't know. I know you've been talking about this stuff for a while, Gina. But uh, we... He's not really talking about like the cartel angle in this video, um, but I don't know. I don't know what to make of all of it. I'm not money smart. I'm not. I he like, talked about the cartel tracking. a little bit. He did a little. I bit. I don't remember that a little bit. He at the very. I feel end, like I forgot. I feel like I've forgotten half the video right now. Honestly, at the very end, he said uh, that there has been multiple federal statements made recently talking about how. Uh, cartel are getting into cryptocurrencies that it's an easy way for them to launder their money and make it clean which yeah makes sense it totally would you know um so could there have been some kind of cartel connection and uh they felt like they got screwed over by this cryptocurrency platform or hex coin and it could be retaliation of that i think Sure, anything money related, right? Because when we talk about a potential drug theory, what we're really talking about is a money theory. That's what it all comes down to. Yeah, you know what I mean? It just so happens to be that the currency is drugs, but it relates to money. Uh the 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 end dollar, you know. Uh so I guess this could be in in the same kind of situation uh on a college campus though i just think that it would be more related to dope honestly but you know yeah i think that's the point though who was the one that that, that people are saying right now that sold drugs for fun xana okay they're saying xana and emma did it as like a hobby <laughs> i'm <laughs> yeah fun hobby I guess. Great hobby. <laughs> Dealing with scary people all day, you know? Oh, appreciate it, Rumsey. 
Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> we'll have to check out the Neeks Peaks video. Yeah. But uh, I think that is it for tonight, you guys. This was a good one, man. I love when Drip Drop comes out with his videos. <laughs> and if Drip Drop, you are watching this, reach out to us. Uh, we would love to have you on. Um, email, uh, what is it? True crime talk show or our contact thought, right? I mean, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. But contact thought, right. It's posted everywhere. And we can do pre-planned questions even because we'd like to get to know about the, about the creator, you know, some, some questions about why you do what you do and, uh, what, motivated you to do make content in this way i think it would be really interesting and i think people would find a lot of interest in it and uh i i, I think it would be good content don't you yeah i think we could talk about things we could pre-plan it so that drip drop could stay in character yes. and it could still be a part of that absolutely 100 you know, yep yep absolutely. and not release information he doesn't want to be released obviously of course, of course, a hundred percent. And uh, if you guys are watching and you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Once we hit 3K, I am quitting the nose spray. Okay, no more nose spray at 3K. No more nose spray at 3K. Um, but yeah, and hit that like button on the way out. We appreciate all of you. Make sure you check out the crime circus cult video right here this one right here this is what we were talking about tonight and give them the thought riot community welcome and love and hit that like button and comment and everything we appreciate all of you yep all of you and ian ian said we had a full-fledged storyline with the out of context clips did we <laughs> so i'm gonna hop on discord yeah. and go look at them and you guys should too i'm gonna try and get the premiere uploaded for wednesday it's gonna be awesome like really cool i think so um another idaho four topic we've been idaho four heavy for the last week but it's a good thing so yeah. um yeah yeah good night everybody yes good night everybody we appreciate all of you appreciate you all all of you a good night yep see you on discord later bye